Hello everybody, this is Mark with Pelican Wooden Things. This week I had an idea. I was going to pour a bit of resin on this non-stick mat and wait till it was mostly hard, just still malleable, but uh, stiff, stiff enough to handle and basically shove it in a cup. So I'm watching the temperature and the hotter it gets, more likely it is to be about to set up. Put a little space uh, or a dam on each side so it doesn't roll over the edge. And after a bit of time, I was able to manipulate this sheet of resin, as you can see. thought I would do perhaps two or three sheets of resin. In the end, I ended up uh, just doing two. I think it was sufficient. So I'm going to let this one harden and I'm going to set up another one of a different color. A couple of primary colors, some of my favorite colors. I use red and blue. And yeah, probably if I had done another sheet, I would have used yellow. Okay, so after some time, this one too is ready to uh, to insert into my my project here. So I'm going to let that one harden up too, and then after that's uh, solidified. I'm going to fill it up with clear resin, maybe a little bit of color, but nothing, uh, nothing drastic. Smidge of gold. Want it mostly transparent. And of course, into the pressure pot. And we wait for it to harden up. few days later okay so I'm gonna cut off the rough top on the bandsaw mark the center and get it on the lathe Put a couple of holes in it to fit into the uh, the live center there. Try to make sure that's on the uh, center as well as um, so you know to balance it out. And as usual, when I make a lidded vessel, I'm going to start by making a tenon on the end here so I can grab onto it with my chuck a little later like right now we'll be able to hold on to this one of the more challenging aspects of making a lidded vessel is where am I going to hold it? How am I going to hold it? Um, you have to be able to hold both ends because you're going to work both ends separately. So, tenons on both ends. A bowl is a little bit easier. You only have to worry about 
putting a mortise or a tenon on one end, um, you don't have to really plan about how it's all going to go together and how you're going to hold it and get the two pieces to fit with one another and so on and so forth. So uh, a bit more challenging to make a lidded vessel, lidded bowl, whatever you want to call it. So now that I've got my tenons on both ends, I'm going to come up with a shape I find pleasing. I did note it was chipping out a little bit. I think I made an error when I sprayed the mold release on that first sheet of red when I put it down. It transferred to the resin itself, and the resin is releasing from the clear that uh, subsequently... Um, covered it up when you had it in the uh, the container well, I'll put a few drops of super glue on it and seem to hold it in place just in those spots where it was coming up It's my first time doing this, so hey, it's a learning process, live and learn. Give it a little sand and a little polish, and we can proceed to cutting the top off. Like so. Okay, since the top is already in the chuck, you might as well shape that. First, I make a generous overhang so it will slide over the top of the notch I will make in the bottom half once I get that on on the lathe I always give it a little extra room because I know I'm going to be trimming um, the top a little more narrow uh, to fit the profile of the bottom when it tapers down like that and you cut it into two pieces there's a natural angle uh, of stuff that's cut out so the top is just larger than the bottom so I have to straighten it out later on and therefore I like to make maybe a quarter inch ridge around the top there to uh, make sure we still have some grabiani <laughs> power when we get the bottom uh, uh, shaped as well And as ever, we get a little sanding, a little polishing. Not going to make you sit through all of it, but here's a little sample. So there's the inside of my top, all shaped and polished. Now we can hollow out the bottom section. First thing I'm going to do is the opposite of what I did on the top. I will make a, a notch on the outside and fit it to the top. So the lid will fit on it. And it's just take a little cut try it out, take a little cut, try it out, and so on and so forth until you get something that fits reasonably. If you're lucky, it'll fit reasonably tightly because you're going to want to have the lid on it to, um, to shape it all together. Once I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to cut the lid down a little bit to fit into the size of the, of the bottom on the outside. 
easiest way to do that is just leave the bottom on the lathe and um, and trim it down from the friction hold of the top and the bottom together we'll hold it and you can shape it tightly also we'll have to get rid of the tenon on both ends so it's helpful with that as well So here I am trying out my uh, newest tool edition. It's a larger bowl gouge. It seems to be cutting fairly well. It's a bit large for this project, but excuse my shoulder. But uh, seems to do okay. I just recently got this tool. If you're curious about how I set it up, I put out a video a week or two ago. Go ahead and check it out. I'm not going to stay with this larger bowl gouge. I'll switch it up in a moment, but I, I just wanted to try it. So both for reach sake and because it's resin, it works a little bit better generally with the carbide tool. So here I am, switched over to the carbide. Try to smooth out the uh, edges of the bottom and get it to depth. sanding and polishing of course As I mentioned, you put the top back on and we'll have to trim down the top to match up with the bottom. And uh, in a little bit we'll um, be removing the tenon from the top as well. So here we go. Okay, see I just did the shaping right around where the top and the bottom come together. And they match perfectly. Here we go a tenon removal and shaping of the lid. is when the long strands of resin really do kind of get in your way. You're like, what am I doing? I can't see. Okay, my lid wasn't really tight, so I'm going to um, attach it with a little blue tape so I can do the final shaping of the lid. decorative ridge in there to shape it and of course sanding and polishing okay, last step remove the tenon from the bottom and then we'll be just about done with this thing very similar to the process of removing it from the top. And similar problems with this, <laughs> the strands of resin flying off and 
not being able to see what I'm doing. Give it that little extra sheen. I'm going to buff out the whole thing inside and out. Not going to make you watch that either, but again, here's a little sample. And here's the final product. I think it came out very nice. I got a see through quality. Here's the light behind it. I'll flip it around so you can see the light in front in just a moment. There you go. Has a nice three-dimensional feel to it as the red and the blue are in three-dimensional space and they're overlapping each other. It came out quite nice. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.